Hi there, everyone. It's John Pushkar, and I'm here today to bring you another episode about obvious combustion and fuel system hazards. Yes, it's episode one from the Captain Obvious Hazard series. And although there's a little bit of humor there, and hopefully I caught your interest with the Captain Obvious character, there's really nothing funny about what I'm going to be showing you. All of these are very serious issues, which, if not addressed promptly, could be a serious safety hazard for you and your facility. So, again, today's episode is all about control panel issues, so let's go from there. Over the last 40 years, I've developed and led fuels and combustion equipment safety programs for the largest manufacturers in the world. Today, I'm bringing you knowledge, insights, and best practices about fired equipment and natural gas safety. Over the next few minutes, you'll get the kind of practical, real-life explanations that I've become known for. So I'd like to first remind everyone that all control panels are not created equally. There should be clear arc flash panel markings to warn you that there could be high voltage or an arc flash hazard on the inside of the panel. You could clearly see that this panel split into one side that's power and the other side that's control. I'm not asking you to be opening power panels, especially those panels that are marked without the proper gear and the proper training. This session is only meant for you to look in on and investigate unpowered control panels with the proper PPE and under the proper guidance of someone who's experienced, who understands that there's not some type of an arc flash or high voltage hazard. So again, warning to you, this isn't for everybody. If someone else has got a panel open that's trained and again has the proper PPE, then I suggest you look at the following issues I'm going to be presenting. So first of all, I'd like you to be aware of recalls, safety notices, and alerts. These are all three different criteria that folks who supply components uh, choose very carefully. They mean very different things. I'm going to be showing you an example of some of these things, and you'll soon understand how serious these issues could be within your facility. In the picture there, on the right-hand side of this slide, I'm showing you what is a recalled burner management system. It's a very old one. You probably won't see one of these in your career, but it's just an example of many things in the fuels and combustion industry that have been recalled that are out there in the field. This is an R4140 Honeywell burner management system. You could see it's got cams that rotate and make various mechanical switches. And here's an example of the type of notice that's out there. Now, you would never get one of these delivered to your business or to your office. You'd likely find out about this if a distributor who you purchased this item from knew you as a customer. Otherwise, it takes quite a bit of research to understand who has recalled various safety components. I've done much of that research, at least from a few years ago. I have some of this information I can pass on. If you'd like to send me an email or contact me at the end of this video, I'd be glad to share that with you. But this is an example. Typically, there's a date. It tells you what the hazard is, and it gives you a method to evaluate whether or not you have that exact component, and it should tell you, like, stop using it immediately, shut down the equipment. Usually, there's some type of hazard warning. Just another example, this is not specifically about boilers, but this is a low water cutoff device uh, attached to a water column. And within this device, there are mercury switches, which make or break specific contacts. There have been recall notices submitted on some of these devices because there are seals that keep water and steam from entering the switch area. I often like to open these up and look 
to look at the model number and serial number to see if this is part of that recall, but also just to check and make sure there's no humidity or evidence of moisture damage within this chamber. This is a programmable logic controller, a PLC. It's often used as a burner management system or as combustion controls for fire devices, boilers, ovens, furnaces, and many of these have been the subject of safety notices. There are firmware and software upgrades that have regularly been communicated about PLCs. If you have a PLC type of burner management system or combustion control system, you would do yourself well to investigate this at the manufacturer's website to make sure you haven't missed some important safety notice. Here's an example of one of those safety notices, it, or actually it's a product service advisory. This is from Alan Bradley regarding some of their analog modules. And if you go to the Alan Bradley website, you'll be able to get the full text of this and also find out about others that you may have or notices that they've put out that could be very important to you. Then there's also the topic of things that are now obsolete. Now obsolete doesn't necessarily mean not safe, it just means that the manufacturer no longer supports that device. So there has been a notice put out from Eclipse years ago about their Veriflame modules and obsolescence applying to them. Here's an example of that notice now from Honeywell Thermal Solutions. Honeywell now owns Eclipse. And they're showing you that if you have these particular models of Veriflame units, they recommend that you upgrade them to a different Honeywell product. Now, the reason that you want to pay attention to this is that if you should have some type of a failure with an obsolete piece of equipment, it means you can't buy another one. They're flat out telling you here if this Veriflame unit fails, you're now into purchasing and replacing it with one of those 7800 series units, which is all well and good, but it's not a plug and play replacement. So this means you're going to be down for a considerable amount of time to order one of these, get it in, and rewire your panel for a couple of days before you can actually then be back in service. Don't you think it'd be a better idea to do this on your terms rather than in the middle of a critical production period? I think so. This is why we recommend that clients always pay attention to obsolescence issues. And again, here's one of the later model 7800 series burner management systems. There are blue Honeywell BMS boxes like this that are their 7000 series. Those are also obsolete. There are Honeywell burner management systems with open relays. They are also obsolete. So again, in the whole world of what might be obsolete, one of the most important devices you have are the burner management systems. So it's a good place to start. It's a good thing to investigate first. Again, here's one of those BC 7000 series Honeywell burner management systems. And again, it's an obsolete device, so it's not a plug and play. You don't pull this off and just put right back in its place the new 7800. So what about wiring issues? Well, I really hope you never encounter a panel like I'm showing you here. It would uh, make me feel very squeamish being in the presence of equipment operated by this kind of a panel. One of the important issues that you have to be aware of is when folks have bypassed safety devices inside of panels. Sometimes it's very obvious. Here you could see a couple of alligator clips on some terminals. This is sometimes done when people are testing things, but it's been known to be done as well when a device has failed in the field and someone wants to keep operating. So you see alligator clips on terminals, it's a red flag. You should stop, you should investigate. You should have someone confirm that it's not a safety device that could jeopardize you and or your colleagues' safety. If you're into a panel and all of the other wires are neatly into a raceway, or they're all labeled and here's one that's not, or it's a different gauge, or it's terminated differently, 
These are again all reasons to ask questions and be suspicious. Sometimes there's tags that are left over that actually even say something's been jump right out or bypassed. Always good to read what's been presented there for you from folks who have worked on it in the past. These two tags actually talk about devices that have been bypassed. You need to investigate these before you continue to operate. And bypassing devices isn't always just done with wires. Here's a mechanical purge timer. You can see it's set to zero. This, in effect, bypasses the entire purge cycle. Here's someone's jammed open relays with pieces of cardboard. Again, another obvious type of issue. You should not operate this equipment this way. And the last obvious issue I'd like to leave you with is whether or not the actual panel is right for the application to begin with. Sometimes when you locate certain devices on the outside of a panel, it changes the hazard rating. It's no longer an intrinsically safe panel. You need to understand the environment that the panel is located in. You need to understand what Class I, Division I, and Class I, Division II areas are within the National Electrical Code. So here, for example, I'm showing you a gas compressor, and you see what the junction boxes look like. You see what the switches look like. You see the panel that's there. These are bolted cover panels. They're hazard area location specific fittings and devices. If you would then happen to see a panel, like I showed you in the previous slide, located adjacent to all of this equipment, should be obvious to you that something's wrong and that panel is out of place. Again, the places to look, you want to look in the National Electrical Code, which is NFPA 70. Article 500 is for hazardous area classifications. There's also a recommended practice 497 that NFPA publishes, which can give you a lot of information about distance requirements from areas that may have a release of flammable liquids or flammable gases, or that regularly are known to contain these kind of environments. www.nfpa.org will give you access to these documents for free. One more kind of obvious thing, you could see here that someone had put silicone seal on the penetrations for the conduit that went into this panel. Obviously, this is not a rated panel for the area that it's in. It happens to be in a boiler room, and it's not a NEMA 4 or a 4X panel, which would be rated for light splash or hose down and splash, as you could see on the left-hand side here. Just another very simple, very obvious thing, since that's the nature of this presentation. Do the panel lights even work? If you have indication lights, again, make sure they work. Something simple, something obvious, yes. But something very important that could impact your safety, also yes. Hi, it's John Pushkar. I hope you found this episode useful. If you'd like to know about more ways that I can help, you can check out my website at www.prescientts.com. There you'll find information about the Prescient Technical Services Online School, my book, Fuels and Combustion System Safety, What You Don't Know Can Kill You, and also about some of the consulting projects that I've been providing to clients for the past 40 years. Things like implementing inspection and testing programs on a corporate enterprise-wide level, things like reviewing and commenting on capital equipment purchases that involve combustion equipment, and even being a legal expert if things go really wrong. Once again, thank you for attending, and remember, be safe out there. The life you save, it just might be yours.